What's going on, Brez? It's your boy Turtle the Black, and today we've got a lot to talk about. So, first things first, I'd like to start with some simple clarification. So, in the last video, I said that I wouldn't be using this channel to talk about build. And then, five minutes later, I sit here and tell you I'm going to put out a video about a new phone to build. Obviously, I don't really want to contradict myself, so I think the way this is probably going to work is along these lines. This channel will feature builds, it will feature information about Warframe, it will feature all kinds of things. It's not exclusively for builds, but I will talk about my experiences with builds and what I use during certain missions in case anybody ever has any questions. So in the case of the Euphona Red Crit build, I will post a video of that once I have it down, and I might even start posting regular videos just talking about potential builds or builds that I have. If you see something in a video that you are interested in, I will gladly tell you what I'm using and how to get to that point in the game. Another note that I'd like to talk about is <clears throat> my mic quality and just my equipment in general. So I am doing a commentary series and I don't necessarily have the best equipment because I'm a college, I'm a poor college student, I don't have a lot of money, blah blah blah, I'm sure you've heard all this before. Um, I don't really, I'm not asking for donations or anything, I don't have a Patreon or anything, I don't really need all that right now, but <clears throat> what would really help me out the most would just be if you liked and share these videos with your friends, commented, give me feedback, stuff like that, just stuff that I can use to improve my craft, just per se. Anyway, let's get into the content, what you're really here for. So first thing on my list is Conclave, and oh my god, I'm horrible at Conclave. Like, I've been playing this game since Ember Prime was released, so I've been around for a very long time. And Conclave back in the day used to just be, get your friends, go into a Conclave match and dick around. And Zephyr used to be the queen of that stuff, because you could jump up and not necessarily be like out of the map, you could be in some pretty unaccessible stuff, spots, and people couldn't see you or anything. So if you get a good sniper rifle like the Vectiv, go up into one of those unaccessible areas and you just snipe your friends and just have a great time with it. Conclave now is a lot more serious and because they made it an actual like syndicate thing, it's like an actual like game mode now and it's totally viable. Like if you don't want to do PvE, you could totally hop into a PvP match and just have a ball with it. It's not really my forte, mostly just because I'm not much of a PvP or just in any game. But it is something I want to be able to work towards because in order to be like a really well-rounded Warframe player, I have to be able to be good on both PvE and PvP aspects. So I'm gonna talk about Conquest. I'm bad at this. I'm really bad at this. I would like to be good, but I'm garbage. Um, but right now, I have no idea what works the best. Like I see people using fully automatics and I think, oh, well, yeah, the fully automatics will seem like the best guy to use. And then somebody next match turns around and beats my ass with a Latron Prime. And I'm like, oh, okay, so some automatics. And then somebody snipes me in the head and I'm like, okay, so it's a sniper rifle. It's just, it's complicated. I don't know what works. I guess it's kind of just a play style thing because I mean, even now, I can tell that Warframe is not really a PvP intensive game. It's definitely got its PvE down packed. But the Conclave aspect is definitely a lot more underdeveloped. And so it's going to give it some time before there's like an actual base and meta and groundwork and framework for the whole PvP side of Warframe. Right now, though, everything is just kind of up in the air. So what I'm asking for is some suggestions. I have no idea what to do. Right now, I'm kind of running around with Sabaris, the Stradivar, and the Tiburon. Three round burst, a two round burst, and a fully automatic slash semi automatic rifle. Um, I'm using Legion, Taipedo, and Tonbo, or the Orthos Prime. I switch out pretty consistently. And I use the Euphona Prime, Meridetron, and the Marilock as my secondary. Uh, and as far as Warframe goes, I use Ash, Bolt, and Frost. But uh, yeah. Conclave, not really my cup of tea, but I plan on getting better. Um, I will definitely start playing a lot more and just kind of just improving gradually. And hopefully I can start putting out some pretty interesting Conclave videos. I didn't do too bad in the game that you're seeing right now. Obviously it wasn't my best performance, but I mean, it wasn't terrible. I'm usually ending up somewhere like fourth or fifth place, so this wasn't too bad. Anyway, 
enough of that nonsense. Let's get on to the real work here. So, next thing I'd like to talk about is farming. So, Warframe is sometimes an RPG, sometimes it's a really fun MMO third person shooter. Sometimes it's a slide simulator, and sometimes it's Farming Simulator 2017. In this case, it's Farming Simulator 2017. And more specifically, I'm talking about Valbon and Trinity Prime. So, Valbon is probably the worst of the two, but I'm gonna go ahead and start from my experience. I recently got Trinity Prime. Trinity Prime has a requirement to get 9,000 cryotic for one of her parts, and I don't know how common cryotic is like i mean i know you get it from excavation missions and whatnot but like i don't know how people would just naturally get 9000 cryotic i don't know if people like have banks of this stuff like i do with like nanospores or something but cryotic is not necessarily like easy to come by unless you sit there in an excavation mission for like ever and you've been there thinking like 9000 cryotic that's like nine excavation missions a five on cryotic each, which isn't necessarily like difficult, it's just really time consuming, like holy hell. You do that for Trinity, and that's the only time you had to do that for her. You had to do it again for Valbon Prime. And Valbon Prime has another extreme caveat, which is methane extract, which is also known as alertium. You know why? Because you can only get it during alert missions or sometimes from getting all three caches in a sabotage mission. This is kind of an issue because it means that Valbon Prime can only be gotten within four days minimum. Or is it five? Five days minimum. Because you need 20 Nitan Extract in order to craft Valbon Prime. And Nitan Extract only shows up in alert missions four times per day at a maximum. So that means only one part can be done per day, which is done. Wait, hold on. Four Nitain, maybe it's five Nitain. Or I think it's five Nitain per part. Don't quote me on that. I'll put up a thing. I'm an idiot. You don't have to tell me. Anyway, <clears throat> that's not important. What is important is Nitain extract should probably get some kind of more availability. I guess it's just it doesn't seem helpful to players to have to wait all day in order to get Nitan Extract, especially like, because people are busy. And so if you want like a prime frame like Valbon, it's hard to get something that unobtainable. So something, I feel like something should really be done about the Nitan Extract. It's like some kind of, not necessarily like make it more available, like make the alerts more often, but maybe not just have it in the sabotage missions, maybe like some kind of void kind of thing where maybe even the derelict the derelict has gotten like no attention whatsoever recently they could put it as like a derelict reward or something i think that'd be interesting but on the next topic of farming we're going to talk about behema so for those of you who know behema is a clan dojo weapon and the requirements to start the research for it are ridiculous like I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I do know that, good God, this gun takes the proportions and blows them out of the water. Like, I run a ghost clan of about 10 people right now because I'm trying to get all of the research done for my clan before I start inviting other people so that way they don't have to feel obligated to do the work that we have already done. And also, it just keeps the requirements lower so it's less work for everybody. But, Behema has requirements for what looks like a mountain clan or a moon clan like it's ridiculous the proportions are way off so de has already made a note about this they said that they're not going to change it but they're gonna like essentially make the resources necessary to craft the human more available which i think is an interesting way to go about it maybe not the best way in my opinion but if it makes the resources more available then that kind of works throughout all guns and all weapons that have the same kind of issue that being said, the Cyber is another weapon that seems to be a bit of an issue, requiring 30,000 the cryotic to build. And I've already talked about how difficult it is to get cryotic, so this is kind of a pain in the ass, especially since I'm trying to get all the weapons in the game. So, that one's going to be a bit of a struggle for me. But, let's talk about something a little bit more lighthearted. So, there are some new features coming out in Warframe, one of them in particular that I'm very excited for is the new clan, like, Hitman-esque uh, police detective work kind of thing that they're coming out with. 
I think that'll be a great way for clans to get together and really work towards a goal because a lot of people that I've talked to who are in other clans don't really do a lot of stuff with them. They just kind of play solo or play with randoms. And I think that clans are there for people to like really get together and enjoy time with like-minded people just in a group. And the clan availability is just it's to allow new players to get some guidance and allow veteran players a chance to get some exclusive weapons or to pass their knowledge down to some newer players, which I think is great. Like, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm a master of rank 16. I've been playing for three years. I'm trying to impart my wisdom onto some newer players or just some people who need some help in the game. I'm trying to do the best that I can to help people improve their experience with a game that I love so much. And I think that this new clan edition is really going to help bring clans closer together. Another new thing they're coming out with fairly soon, hopefully by the end of March, is what I'm calling the melody frame, aka the bard frame, aka the music frame, aka one of the coolest looking frames that they've ever come out with. Now, I'm a bit of an audiophile myself. I love music. I love coming up with music. I used to compose music for my orchestra class. I used to do arrangements. Uh, I played cello for eight years now, going on nine pretty soon, and this frame looks like one of my favorites. Uh, I do have a few concerns though, because, I mean, what it seems like is going to be like a lot of AoE kind of stuff, probably buffs and damage dealing things, and I, I hope that they know kind of just what they're doing, just in the sense that I don't want it to be like a repeat of Banshee, because Banshee's great on her own, but I mean, sound and music are pretty close. So that's really my only concern with that, and I'm sure DE's got it down. What I'm really, really excited for, though, is the fact that we'll be able to compose our own music on this frame and then go into missions and listen to it with our abilities and then just jam out with your friends, which would be really cool with, like, the Tenno uh, dojos and stuff, and we can all hang out and just play music together. I think that, that would be really cool, and I'd definitely like to make a video with my clan just, like, a song or something that we compose. So next thing I'd like to talk about is the Umber frame. So, obviously, people who do know this know that there is Excalibur Umbra available in the Chinese Warframe. However, it is not available in the Global Warframe um, for whatever reason, I guess. And people are actually pretty heated about this. Like, I read a forum the other day where some dude was just going off, like, saying that Warframe doesn't give us enough content and the stuff that they promise us never comes out. And people were back in DE up like crazy and it just goes to show that the community is just really close-knit but I have to give both parties credence and my reasoning behind that is Excalibur Umbra and just the Umbra frames in general were teased like a long time ago like I don't know the exact date or anything and I'm probably not going to look that up because it's not important but they were teased a while ago and we haven't heard much of anything on them like there's been no notes no updates and nothing really about the uh, Umber Flame, so it's kind of upsetting and kind of worrying, honestly, because like I'm not sure when they're going to come out, and it seems like a really cool addition, but it also kind of leads to a bunch of other questions, like we're going to see Umbra Weapons, and Umbra Sentinels, Umbra Kubro, Umbra Kazat, stuff like that, like there's going to be a lot to this, and that kind of also begs the question, like, is it necessary to have three different types of one Warframe? Like, we're going to see Volt Prime, Volt Umbra, and Volt Regular. Like, is that going to be a regular thing now? The next thing I got to worry about is the accessibility. Like, is this going to be the same thing with the Relics, or is it going to be something with the Derelict or the Void? Or are they going to come up with an entirely new system, like a questing system? Which I think would be really cool, like, if you do separate quests to get each individual part for each Umbra. And it doesn't have to be easy. By no means does it have to be easy. But I just think it'd be something really interesting that they could do. They could potentially do a lot of things. What I think would be the coolest idea, however, would be is that if you have the base Warframe, like if you have Volt, for example, you have Volt Prime, and you want to like convert Volt into Volt Umbra, you could go through like a quest to do that. And it would like change based off of the Warframe that you have. And the Excalibur would obviously be the first, but I just think that that kind of process would be kind of interesting to do. Something like what they did with the War Within, some kind of cinematic, go through a cave, learn about some new lore and stuff, like the lore behind that frame. Or maybe even like go into like the experience of what each frame had during like their first Tenno operator. 
for example, the uh, codex entries from Rhino and Ember, you can see what happened back then. And rather than just read it in the codex, you could actually see it and experience it and actually play it. And then from that experience, you become the Umbra frame, like the original frame. That's kind of my idea for something like this. That's just how I would go about it. So all in all, I think Warframe is doing great. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things coming pretty soon. Uh, hopefully the Umbras are something that we'll see fairly soon. Um, there is a new uh, operation out for clans that looks really interesting. It's not on console yet, so it's going to be a while before I play it, but um, definitely something I'm going to get my clan prepared for and definitely something I'm going to really enjoy playing. Go check it out on the Warframe website if you're interested, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.